Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benin with Israeli News Live. And later in this video, I wanted to make sure that we warned you that there will be graphic content near the end of the video. However, the first part of the video, as we mentioned in the title, is what Trump must do to actually be re-elected as president. Well, oddly enough, uh, Israel 365 has brought that out in an article that they just recently posted. The key to a Trump victory in 2024, the Noahide laws. We're going to be going into this article here in just a moment, but before I do, what's interesting is even though Israel 365 is saying that, if you remember, Israel National News, or Arut Shiva in Hebrew, uh, posted this article here, Donald J. Trump, champion of Noahide laws. This was back in 2020, November the 3rd. And yet, Israel 365 is clearly saying that he failed in one of his missions. But to redeem himself, he must set up that international court of justice to carry out the seven Noahide laws. Those very laws, as my wife pointed out to you, Yana Satova Benun, has said very frequently, there's a whole list on our website, Israeli News Live, of videos that she did on Noahide laws, and how she always told you, quoting from Jewish sources, it will be a, come about a day when they will take your head and no, the Jewish people will never do it. I agree. They won't do it. Just like it was in the days when uh, the, the, the Pharisees were accusing Israel of breaking their laws. And they came and they said to Pilate, he is guilty and worthy of death. And they said, by our laws, he ought to die. Well, they hadn't made up those Noahide laws quite yet at that time. But anyway, according to their laws, he must die. It was Talmudic laws. They said he made, him being a man made himself God. And then they had Caesar do the dirty work. Well, Trump didn't quite do everything that they were asking him to do even though he was called a champion of the Noahide laws back in Israel's uh, uh, Israel National News. Now, Israel 365 reports now the key to a Trump victory in 2024, the Noahide laws. Let's take a look at some of this. As a Jew, I am deeply grateful for everything Trump did for Israel during his term in the White House. From the outset, Trump made his connection to Jerusalem clear. His campaign victory in 2016, a success as president, resulted from the blessings he received for his connection to Jerusalem. Biden is quite the opposite, he notes. His State, his State Department has established a de facto Palestinian embassy in Jerusalem, greenlit the Iranian attack on Israel, withheld vital intel from the IDF, and embargoed weapons shipments to Israel during the war. That's what Biden did right there. But even Biden were prop Israel it seems clear to me that another Biden term in the White House will result in a global destruction as compared to Trump's presidency, which marked one of the most prosperous and peaceful periods in recent years. This raises the question of why Trump failed in his bid for re-election if his presidency was so successful. The answer emphasizes what he must work to repair it if he re-enters the Oval Office. This is not a matter of politics or policy. Trump's difficulties resulted from neglecting one of the seven Noahide laws. With the fifth Noahide laws, and he quotes Genesis 9, 6, should have just took it straight to the Talmud. God commands man to punish murderers. This is not due to the logic or any innate sense of morality. The reason is for his image, did Hashem make man by punishing crime? Man is 
emulating God's image. We'll read on. The Biden administration has shown over and over again that it sees the rule of law as a tool to be used towards its selfish political ends. At the same time, one of the Biden administration's characteristics is weaponizing the justice system to safeguard him, his family, from the investigation and prosecution. Sounds a lot like Netanyahu, doesn't it? They have also weaponized the court system against their political opponent, Donald Trump, bringing a ridiculous amount of charges against him, the vast majority of which have been revealed to be spurious and based on nothing. This soul disease of twisted justice is, is taking hold around the world. What we have seen in, no in so many forms is lawlessness. It infected the internal criminal court, the ICC they're saying, leading it to make the most bizarre claims against Israel, going so far as to issue an arrest warrant against Benjamin Netanyahu, the leader of Israel. No mention about the leader of Hamas, huh? The sin of injustice is what is destroying the world today. Oh, so there was justice? That's kind of interesting, right? Netanyahu is over there genociding Palestinians while all the while right now, just before we continue to read on, so you don't sit there and run away and get angry about me putting this video out. You have two articles, the Times of Israel, three weeks before October the 7th, IDF Gaza Division warned of Hamas' plan, of atta plan to attack and take 250 hostage hostages. The uh, Jerusalem Post, wonder how long these articles will stay up before Netanyahu makes them take it down. IDF knew of Hamas' plan to kidnap 250 people before October the 7th attack, uh, according to this report. You're going to be shocked what you find out there. Let's go back, though. Misguided youth take to the streets in masses, unashamedly claiming that Moss was justified in his October the 7th attack. No, the youth are not saying that Hamas was justified. The youth are going about saying it's genocide what Israel is doing in light of of the event of October the 7th, thinking that they need to genocide everybody in sight in order to be able to get the hostages released. Trump did many things well, but fix his soul sickness of injustice. Trump must return the justice system to being in God's image. In his first term, term Trump ignored the Noahide commandment to establish a God-based justice system. I believe he is paying for that now. I believe the entire world is paying for that sin. I support Donald Trump, but this conditional support conditioned on his fixing the court system, he must do it to retain political control, but more importantly, he must do this for the universal godliness. I told you, Trump is going to be president again. They will consider him one of the messiahs of Israel. You just wait. They will bring down a hammer upon the believers like never before. Oh, the Jewish people, or excuse me, the Christians that support Israel unconditionally, regardless of how many people they butcher in the process, you have nothing to fear. Just the true godly believers, that's the ones that have to fear. The ones that are willing to stand up and tell the truth. Listen into this one here. October 7th did not occur in a vacuum. It was preceded by decades of violence, disposition, and lawful occupation and denial of Palestinian self-determination. This is what uh, is stated by the UN confirms that the events did not start on October the 7th. Let's lawful start. occupation and denial. On the 7th October, attack in Israel at and Israel's subsequent military operation in Gaza have not occurred in a vacuum. They were preceded by decades of violence and retribution, dispossession, unlawful occupation and denial of the Palestinians' right to self-determination. On the 7th October, 
attack in Israel. Sorry, uh, it's only repeating it at that point there. That's what was stated at the uh, the UN on that issue there. But now we're finding out, three weeks before October the 7th, the IDF Gaza Division warned of Hamas plan attack to take 250 hostages. The report revealed September the 19th document that specified terror groups where it was training for mass assault on the south. I feel like crying, yelling, swearing, says soldier involved with, with the memo. A document compiled with the IDF Gaza Division less than three weeks before October the 7th warned that Hamas was training for a large-scale invasion of Israel, during which hostages would be taken in mass. The Khan Public prod Broadcaster revealed Monday. Titled Detailed Raid Training from End to End, the document was circulated on October the, excuse me, September the 19th, was reportedly brought to the attention of at least some senior intelligence officials, but apparently ignored. Khan did not specify who produced the document or clarify who may have, have seen it. Reportedly, based on the information from military intelligence units 8200, the document estimated the number of hostages Hamas was aiming to seize at 200 to 250. According to Khan, citing unnamed security sources during the actual October 7th massacre, 251 hostages were taken and 1,200 people were killed amid the acts of brutality. The document describes a series of exercises, excuse me, a series of exercises that Palestinian terror groups elite forces were carrying out, including drilling for raids on the Israeli towns and military posts, training on how to hold soldiers, civilians, hostages inside Gaza and what circumstances they could be killed. At 11 a.m., the several companies were observed gathering for prayer and lunch before the start of training. Part of the document states at noon equipment weapons are distributed to the fighters, after which a company headquarters drill takes place. 2 p.m., the raid practice begins. The document was said to add the Hamas commandos also practice infiltrating mock Israel defense forces outposts simulating bases on the Gaza border. This exercise was carried out by four companies from the terror group, which each assigned a different outpost. The document also detailed the areas within the basis that the commandos planned to target, including control rooms, synagogues, living quarters, according to the TV report. Commandos and Hamas elite Nik Nakba forests were, were in instructed not to leave documents behind after they raided bases, according to the memo. The terrorists were trained to ensure hostages. Um, wait a minute, lost a spot here. Terrorists were trained to ensure hostages did not have telephones on them, were forbidden from informing hostages' families of their condition, and were ordered to move them if it became apparent that Israel determined their location, and the document reportedly noted they were also told to threaten to kill hostages to deter them from escaping. The document was brought to the attention of senior intelligence officials, at least within the Gaza division. The unna unnamed security official told Khan, the government and top military leaders have contended there were not warned about an imminent planned invasion at the time. Well, yeah, they were. Yes, they were. Hmm. Isn't that something? And yet we told you all about that at the very beginning of this war, when we were getting former IDF officials constantly saying what happened. And even that they disarmed a lot of these settlements along the border with Gaza. So they knew in advance. The Times of Israel reported it as well as the Jerusalem Post, both of them reporting the same information it is unbelievable. And then they talk about Trump needs to get into office. In order to get into office, he needs to reestablish the Noahide laws. I was so upset because Netanyahu had an arrest warrant put out for him by the ICC because of his continual, continual, unbelievable things that he does or that he did to the Palestinians, ordered these people in Gaza 
has brought about the deaths of literally thousands. Unbelievable. Listen into this right here. I wanted to warn you of the graphic footage beforehand. This is a volunteer doctor. He also volunteered in Ukraine. He's a surgeon. And he was in Gaza, and he brought back this report. I'm only going to play about two minutes of it, and then I'll leave the video link for you in the description so you can see the entire thing for yourself. Listen in here. The film you're about to watch is a compilation of video diaries I recorded on a volunteer medical mission into Gaza. What I saw there was worse than any war zone I've ever been to. I can't be clear enough. The video is hard to watch. The footage is very graphic. But there are times when the world needs to see the horrors of war. I believe this is one of those times. There's a young girl named Amira that you'll get to meet. She has gruesome injuries. Amira should be on everyone's mind every day that this war continues. End of day 11. It's been another really long day. First thing on the agenda was trying to get um, some patients transferred out of Gaza. There's the 15-year-old kid that was paralyzed. He was hit by a tank shell when he was playing soccer. There's one, one girl, Jenna, she's really malnourished. Their families are asking us if they can be transferred. One of them just um, burst into tears, sobbing, and I, I just, I didn't know what to do. Um, because we can't, we can't take all of them. There was an airstrike. One of our paramedics was killed, and two of them were critically injured. It's just a shock when you're in the emergency room bay. They bring in someone who you know. His heart stopped, so we had to do chest compressions. We had to intubate him. And it, it was just really hard for the staff. They don't have time to really even grieve, because if they stop, the work doesn't get done. People die. Unreal. It's apocalyptic. My name is Sam Ritar, and I'm a surgeon from Chicago. In my spare time, I volunteer in war zones, and now I'm part of the first convoy of four international doctors to be embedded into northern Gaza. This moment, northern Gaza, there is zero international presence. We're completely cut off from the world. The mission is supposed to be two weeks long, but we bring enough food for a month in case we get stranded. I just happen to know. As we wait at this Israeli checkpoint, a bomb goes off nearby. During the checkpoint, we're not supposed to get out of the car. Mm. We are checked by snipers, so always the hands... Uh... We're just one ambulance, driving into the apocalypse. But I feel obligated to be here. And welcome to Gaza. Here we are. I'm going to show you what a collapsed healthcare system actually looks like. Even if you follow the news, the images you see are a sanitized perspective of a war zone. So this time I decide to film my journey. Day one, so it's day two, the end of day four, end of day six, beginning of day seven. When I'm not operating, I record video diaries. I did not get that much sleep last night. Another mass casualty event. Back to back to back cardiac arrest. Cut off the electricity and conserve fuel. And I interview doctors and patients. What was this? I did not believe him. If there was a message you would like to tell the world. One message you could share. If you to give a message to the world, what would it be? We try to plant our futures in this place. But now there is no future. Help us. Help us. Please, ceasefire. Please, stop this massacre. And what can I say? I'll post the link in there for you because it's only going to get far more graphic as you watch it. Uh, I want to thank Dr. Attar, though, for being willing to document his time there. And you just saw for yourself the Times of Israel, the Jerusalem Post, willing to publish 
they knew weeks in advance this attack was coming. Why was it ignored? I knew about it a year in advance, but I just didn't know it was going to be Israel. I was just told a major conflict was going to happen in the Middle East that will ignite World War III. When the event started, I asked, was that it? And I was told, yes. We found out that Hamas had been training for a year before the attack. And I was told a little over a year before that attack. I shared with you in the beginning, had to remove my videos for threats that were being made to me by a certain platform. I was about to be shut completely down for telling you the truth. We shared with you from one Israeli where I, he gave me a written statement. A mouse couldn't touch the fence. They wouldn't know about it. He told about how they were disarmed at Sederot. Specifically, he mentioned the settlement of Sederot. They were disarmed months, just about a month or so before the attack. All their armory was taken away, so they had no way to defend themselves. He told me about how he was working with that very division. You guys remember all that, don't you? We had female former Israeli soldiers that spoke out, many of them to the peril of their own lives for even saying anything. But now the truth is starting to trickle out, at least some of it. The only heroes that day were the few Israeli police that knew nothing about this planned attack that came to the aid of the settlers there because the military was told to stand down for nearly eight hours. Interesting, huh? Even Rabbi... Um, Oh, what was his name? I forget his name now, but I played his videos for you. He even knew it was an inside job. Mitzrahi, that was his name out of New York. He's an Israeli Jew, though, by the way. And he knew it was an inside job. Anyway, listen, we're in a tough time. One thing I'll remind you about, EMP Shield. You know, a, an EMP attack on this country, it could very easily take place. Another thing that could happen is, of course, we're getting the storms from Planet X and things like that. I'm going to go more into that issue, too, over on Patreon. I just released a video a little bit about that here uh, yesterday. If you want to uh, join us on Patreon dot com forward slash Israeli News Live, I'll put the link in the description below. But your EMP shield... INL50, that's a coupon code you want to use anytime you're purchasing a, um, uh, you're getting, your, if you're going to, if you're going to add something to your cart, you just want to type into that cart, hang on, I don't know what that is, so let me go back, here we go, right there. Just type in capital I-N-L for Israeli News Live, 5-0. They will give you an additional $50 off whatever the purchase price is. We thank you. We appreciate you. God bless you and have a great day. But it's certainly not a great day for everyone.